A Northside pet shop was labeled a nuisance property and flooded with dozens of city employees executing an administrative warrant. Yeah, the owners of Forever Pets say the city's aggressive approach was excessive and has threatened their decades old business. I think it was just a waste of city do city dollars that they brought all these people in. It was it was a waste of time, waste of our tax dollars. It really was. But the city tells a different story, claiming they were justified in going in after repeated violations at that store. Case that investigates Dylan Collier on the tense stalemate that continues. <laughs> When raids by the city's Dangerous Assessment Response Team, or DART, are shown on the news, they typically look like this. A heavy police presence, people in handcuffs, the status quo at a business or home purposely disrupted by a unit created 17 years ago to target the worst of the worst properties in San Antonio. In late January, DART set its sights on Forever Pets, a family-owned business that has operated on Bassey Road since the 1980s. Animal Care Services brought the location to DART's attention that month after the city says its owners failed to come into compliance on several violations. This administrative warrant signed by a judge set the stage for officials from multiple city departments, including SAPD, ACS, Development Services, and Metro Health to descend on the property. Vivian Louie, who helps her elderly mother Anne run the day-to-day -day operations, counted 37 city personnel inside and outside Forever Pets that winter morning. It boggled my mind of, of all those people that were in there. Our whole parking lot was filled with nothing but law enforcement people. Attorney Paul Burgess was able to record portions of the city's enforcement action before being asked to wait outside following several heated encounters with assistant city attorney Eric Burns, the head of the DART unit. Yeah, everybody's recording. Nobody's trying to hide from you. But what we're wanting you to do is allow us to do our job. In the parking lot. Ma'am, miss, ma'am, ma'am. Does she work for the city? Multiple city employees refused to identify themselves to Burgess as he tried to figure out who all was there for the warrant. You Open records will give you my information. Okay, I don't have your name or your badge number. You don't need it. That was one of our red flags right away was the vague notices from uh, department personnel that wouldn't identify themselves. So how did it get to this point? Original owner Toy Louie passed away in late 2020. His wife Ann Here you go. Come on. and daughter Come Vivian on. have tried to step in and fill the void attempting to learn the ins and outs of operating a pet store on the fly. City records confirmed visits to the property by ACS investigators ramped up in regularity in early November. Vivian was eventually given four misdemeanor citations related to the care of animals and record keeping. ACS also denied its application to continue selling pets due to the conditions inside. In January, the business received additional notices of violation this time from city code enforcement for issues including plumbing and electrical. During an appeal before the city's building standards board in early February, Vivian complained that the city gave her no guidance on how to repair the problems. I understand that as, as a business owner, if something's wrong, you walk around with them and let them know this, this, this needs to be fixed. Have they done that at this point? No. They have not. How can you tell me to fix something if I don't know exactly where to fix? The hearing. My answer is going to be no, sir. Well, respectfully. I Much like the raid. My answer is going to be no, sir. Let's please move on. Was emotionally charged and addressed the board through tears. Please don't make me sell the pet store. Burns repeatedly interrupted individuals speaking on behalf of Forever Pets, saying they were addressing topics outside the scope of the appeal. Are y'all trying to destroy this business? Or when we reached out after... Chair, we were, I'm that, that would be an improper okay. question. We want them to thrive. We want it to be a great business. Assistant City Attorney Savita Rice says the family has been walked through how to fix the store's violations and have ignored orders to stop selling pets and remove them from the property while they correct the issues. We attempted education, we attempted voluntary compliance, we came up with the roadmap to obtain that compliance so they could continue selling and it was all met with flagrant disregard. On a recent weekday, it appeared to be business as usual inside Forever Pets as the store's future 
hangs in the balance. There's not really any pet stores where you can go in really anymore, and there's animals and stuff there, and I think that's important. A widow of a World War II veteran. Uh, this is supposed to be a military city. We're not supposed to treat veterans and their families like this. It's despicable. It's sickening to see it happening. We're left with only, they want to shut down a female-owned and Chinese-American-owned family business. That is a ridiculous assertion, and the city vehemently denies that. For KSAT Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. Vivian is scheduled to appear in municipal court Friday on the four citations issued by ACS. The Building Standards Board denied the family's appeal that they were not properly served notice of violations. The store can appeal the animal sale permit denial in district court, although a city spokeswoman told Case that the simpler route would be to correct the violations and reapply for the permit with ACS. We'll continue this story.